gravity has been around since 1518. But what happens, if gravity wasn't just turned off, but gravity was completely reversed? This video has some of the most intense and stressful moments in the history of moments. And I will be attempting to survive one month in upside down Minecraft. So how far can we get in the game? Let's find out. Now you might be saying that we should get wood first, but even getting wood has been made deadly by this gravity. Because once you chop this tree, the leaves will die, therefore, I will die. So it was time to dig up, aka down, into the ground. But now that we have wood, what now? The plan was to find some more wood since we would need a lot to get anywhere. Luckily, there was a forest nearby, and what appeared to be a cave. After popping out on the other side of the hill, I also discovered a lake. Usually this would be an annoying obstacle, but here, it is free transportation, because Steve can use his face muscles to swim. By using doors to assist in breathing and finally reaching the cave, I was met with extreme disappointment. Because this cave did not go anywhere. I would say that my day was ruined, but it was no longer daytime. And mobs began arriving to assassinate me. Upside down zombies, skeletons, and creepers visited my cave. But due to the weird physics, zombies cannot attack me. Neither can creepers. Or can they? That leaves skeletons as the greatest danger as one upside down arrow can send me into the void. But there was an even more gigantic issue to my survival. Getting food. Due to Steve needing a bajillion calories to regenerate anything, we were now starving. So how do we get food? Animals get scared when they are clobbered with a stone axe. And when they get scared, they get out of reach where my upside down bridges cannot go. So it was time for a trap. After planting some upside down seeds and using the dead skeletons to make bone meal to create strong and healthy wheat, I began luring sheep to my cave to beat them up for free food. This was the life. But we had to progress. It was time to find another cave for better resources, but how do we find caves when the ground is in our face? It was time to go up, aka down, for a better view of the world. But how do we do this? Usually I would use water, but water flows up relative to speed. So it was time to use trap doors. I discovered this method where you use four trap doors to go one block down without falling into the sun, and just rinse and repeat. After going down about 10 blocks, I began making something similar to a grid of highways to scout out the forest above me. After connecting my base to a forest to get some more materials, I was reminded that I was not alone. They were in the trees. After nearly getting sniped off the treetops, I learned my lesson and decided to make a shield with the few ores I found in my base. But at long last, I found a promising cave above me. Finally, more iron. Enough for iron apparatus. With that out of the way, the next step was to find a village. Usually this would take hours and thousands of blocks of making bridges around the world. But I discovered that if you were to attach yourself to a boat, you shall become normal again temporarily. Even though this was slow and could not go up slopes, this was much better than using bridges. In order to quote unquote, jump, one block, I have to build this contraption, switch gravity, destroy the boat, and do some other annoying stuff, to travel up a hill. But finally, I discovered signs of intelligent human life. After doing some bridging above the sun, and getting extremely close to the ground, I had another near-death incident due to these village animals running into me and causing traffic jams. Not to mention there were some zombies that had the same idea of turning this village into their own base, and I had to assassinate them to save the villagers, which would be useful later. Now it was time to transform this upside down roof into my new home. On the fourth day, I decided to go on the mining grind. After digging up, aka down, to look for diamonds, I heard the sound of cave water. By using subtitles to locate the location of the water in the cave so I could locate the cave, I discovered rich, diamonds. <laughs> With a diamond pickaxe, I could finally do some upside down obsidian mining. But while this obsidian is useful, I saved one bucket of lava. If you didn't know, the lava bucket is one of the most overpowered weapons, 
allowing you to trap mobs and kill them rapidly without wasting weapon durability. But anyways, it was time to get out of here. Which was going to be rather tricky due to these mobs on the ceiling. Just kidding. Because I found a ravine. I dropped down to the ceiling, and saw these clueless mobs above me on the ground, who could not reach me. So I just dug to the surface and returned to base. Now it was time, to enter the nether. Which rhymes. Speaking of nether. According to my calculation. 0% of my viewers are from the nether. Please subscribe. Smash the subscribe button for more survival challenges. Anyways back to what we were talking about. Immediately after entering, things went terribly wrong. The nether portal deposited me in the soul valley biome, which means there will be a rather large amount of skeletons. But that was the least of our problems. We could not use the boat strategy since doing so would cause me to take a swim in the lava ocean. Water buckets were futile, and I was getting sniped by this guy. Which meant the best way to explore the nether is to go down to the nether ceiling. And what better way to do this, than by using hay bales. Except I had an epic bale fail and nearly died of fall damage. This took a few minutes to heal from, but Steve did a miraculous full recovery despite doctor predictions. So it was time to go in one direction and look up for nether fortresses. This was a rather interesting journey, with upside down this magma cubes, lava pools, and basalt stuff. I was a few hundred blocks away when I caught this in the corner of my screen. The fortress. Unlike most playthroughs where fortress blazes were extremely annoying to deal with, I was able to trick blazes into basically giving themselves up to me, since when they fly up, they were actually going down to me. Now that was done, the next step of my plan is getting ender balls, the final ingredient, for the delicious eye of ender. There are two ways to do this. Using a giant grid of bridges to look for endermen in the overworld. Or finding a bastion to trade with piglins. Obviously the second option was more realistic. After a bit of searching, I arrived at the aforementioned upside down bastion with gold. So it was time to switch gravity for a bit and do a gold bank heist, and trade the gold back to the piglins at a cost. But while I was in the middle of selling the gold, an upside down ghast was not very happy at this and decided to MLG snipe me, which I barely survived. Zombified piglins showed up and caused the piglins I was trading with to evacuate. Except instead of escaping, they fell into lava. And I only got two pearls. This was so sad. Luckily I found another piglin family above me, and started launching gold onto them. But wherever I went, the zombies showed up and jump scared the piglins. So I hatched a plan. I was going to take advantage of bad zombie AI. I punched one of them to trigger all of them in the area. Now that we had an upside down army of zombies following me, it was time to lure them off a cliff. Mission success. As for the few pigmen who survived, I used some spare dripstone from the cave mining days to bonk them in the head. Now that we had peace and quiet, it was much easier to trade for ender pearls. After a while, I obtained 12 ender pearls. Enough to locate the stronghold and enter the end. So how exactly do we do this in an upside down world? I began on a journey of epic proportions, that took me through tree parkour, dark jungles, a deep upside down ocean losing three eyes of ender and erode bad rng, using doors, and getting mobbed by drowned. When I finally reached the upside down stronghold on this isolated island, and located the end portal, I was not surprised when I came to eyes of ender short. Instead of being enraged, I took steps to calm down. Because I was not planning to enter the end anyways. Fighting the dragon was simply impossible with upside down gravity and with measly iron armor. Which is why I was going to farm 400 wood logs to make a 1000 block long bridge to the outer end islands, search for an elytra and diamond armor, and return to the end islands to fight the dragon. So it was time to execute this plan. I did find a few enchanted books in the stronghold library, which would be useful later. I also discovered a desert village on my way back to base, and decided to stop there since I was running low on food. But this was a bad idea since I had not one, but two near-death incidents. I decided I had seen enough and left empty-handed. But anyways it was time to get some more ender pearls. And begin farming a bajillion wood while fighting mobs. 
Now that was done, it was time to enter the end. But before we enter the end, you must know that sometimes, the end platform has no roof above it, meaning that instantly after entering the end, you will fall into outer space, ending the run. The solution to this was to use boats. Instantly after jumping into the portal, I would have to look up and spam click the boat. Which I did. The next thing is to create a platform above me before the ender dragon bowling balls me into the void, which I also did. Now for the 1000 block long bridge to the end island. I will see you, in about 10 minutes. At long last, land. Now the end islands are a tiny bit different here. Usually you can just use ender pearls to teleport from island to island. But as you can see here, there were no upside down endermen. So I had to do the boring way of bridging across islands to search for end cities. Nothing here. And nothing there. I backtracked and decided to go this way instead. And I found a beautiful end ship peeking out in the void. Let's go. So here was the plan. I was going to use the safe way of going up, which was down for me, to the ship, using the towers. We weren't here just for the Elytra and the ship though. Because the towers had the juicy enchanted diamond gear. Which was guarded by the dangerous shulkers. But I don't care. Because I can just steal them by burglarizing the chests from outside this window. And now for the main event. The Elytra. I broke into the bottom of the ship and 1v1 the shulker guarding the area. Step 2. Become rich. Now we repeat this end city finding process until I got full diamond armor and tools. After using a boat to reach the surface of the end island, it was time to go in this direction and hope for an end city. Even though I had an elytra, this was the most stressful part. I had not one, not two, but about one octodecillion near death incidents while flying around and doing risky parkour jumps around these chorus trees. After what felt like hours of wandering around these islands, I found a second dense city, and a third one as well. At long last. Full enchanted diamond goodies. There was just one last thing we needed. Food. It was a good thing that chorus fruits were edible, so I spent some time peacefully chopping down chorus forests in my boat. That was until some randomly aggressive endermen showed up and began beating me up while I was stuck in the boat. So I abandoned ship. I thought I was going to die, until one of the chorus trees redeemed me. I decided to wash away the endermen by giving them a shower, and it worked. The triggered endermen got stuck in my boat. So I made a new boat for myself. Everything was about to return to normal when another incident occurred, and this one was a bit deadlier. I was running out of boats and crafting tables to use, so after trapping both endermen at this water park, and then reclaiming my water, I decided to return to the bottom of the end, where no endermen could assassinate me. To do this, I rode a boat off the edge, then exited and glided onto the bottom of the island. Now it was time to make my epic return to face off the ender dragon. Of course, destroying the upside down end crystals like this would be impossible. So I decided to use the boring strategy instead, where I go to the bottom of the pillars, dig straight down, and destroy the crystals from below. Except digging straight down was a terrible idea, so I would dig to the side from time to time to check how close I was. And it was extremely slow. Five minutes in, I gave up and decided to just make a staircase, and then made a hole through the pillar to snipe the crystal. Then I did a double kill by taking out a nearby end crystal while I was here. Eight more to go. To return to the bottom, I use the water bucket to swim up, and walk on the surface by spamming water everywhere and going downstream. Eventually, the waterfall took me to the void, where I jumped off. Now I was going to repeat the process. Just kidding. I realized that this was going to take days, so I used a more risky approach. I was going to fly down to the side of each crystal tower to destroy it, and simply use water to get back up to do the next jump. It was the perfect plan. But the ender dragon had a counter plan. As more pillars were destroyed, the dragon got more annoying. Dragon balls were spitted everywhere. Deadly breath was all over the place. And he kung fu kicked me high into the sky, aka the ground. 
I thought it was all over. But Steve somehow survived this calamity. I destroyed the final crystal and was about to return to base, when I made a fatal mistake. My face muscles had failed me. I was now stranded on this pillar with no water. I ran out of normal food, leaving me with my backup reserve of 250 chorus fruits. The problem is, chorus fruits had the side effect of teleporting you somewhere random. But it seems that reverse gravity causes that feature to disappear. So ignore everything I said. Besides that, I went on a rescue mission to save myself, by using another boat to row into the void, this time falling about a hundred blocks. And how could I forget to save the water as well? Now that the crystals had passed away, it was time to somehow kill the upside down dragon. We would need an extremely good plan. One that does not involve arrows since I only had four left. Meaning we will have to get close enough to the dragon to sword duel it when it flies to the center. To do this, I created an obsidian bridge on the side of this pillar, since dragons cannot break obsidian. And now I just wait at the end of this long stick for the dragon to come close. The dragon is only hittable when it is perfectly lined up with me, and I was going to use Omega Mainframe hack to view the dragon's hitboxes, so I can see where to strike next. It was the perfect plan. Or was it? Because this bridge was basically a runway for the dragon, and it's a dragon battering random me into the 3.5th dimension. The only thing stopping me from dying was the end city armor and chorus fruit feasting. After what seemed like hours of poking the dragon's tail and head, he finally passed away, leaving behind a giant pool of experience. Now that the dragon was dead, I was finally free to go. I came out of the end a changed person. I no longer needed boats to travel the upside down land like the primitive days. I mastered water bucket travel. I made my way back to the village using the power of dihydrogen monoxide, while fighting skeletons. I was finally getting used to being upside down. Now that I was at base, what are we going to do now? It was time to make an upside down creeper farm somehow so I could get fireworks rockets, which allows me to travel anywhere I want when combined with an elytra. So how do we do all of this, you may ask? Watch and learn. Now that we had the ability to go wherever we want, it was time for the final step of this playthrough. Summoning and killing the Wither, for the Nether Star, for the Upside Down Beacon. So how do we do this? I use this enchantment book I found from the stronghold earlier, which happened to have looting on it, and demolished it onto my sword for higher chances of getting skulls. And I might as well repair my elytra with the dead phantom thingies. Next I flew to the nether fortress from earlier and began blocking out all the light sources. Because wither skeletons tend to spawn in dark places. Now, we wait. And farm. It took about 50 wither skeleton kills to get all the skulls. Usually this would be infuriating to do on foot. But with air support, this fortress was too easy. Except I nearly died after launching myself up into the lava ocean which I survived after chugging on cooked mutton to regenerate. 
With the soul sand and skulls in my arms, it was time for my master plan to destroy the wither. Step 1. Get 5 obsidian. Step 2. Fly to the stronghold and into the portal. Step 3. Dig a small hole under the exit portal and make this sideways T thing. Step 4. Summon the wither laying down on the sideways T thing and watch it suffocate in the exit portal. Step 5. Obtain the nether star. Now for the moment we have all been waiting for. By using all the leftover gold from the nether to make 9 gold blocks, and using the nether star to make the beacon, and combining them to make 9 gold blocks and a beacon. We now have a working beacon. By the way did I mention that I relocated my base to the creeper farm sky platform now. It is also rather unfortunate that my elytra was on the brink of extinction due to all the flying, so we would need some mending enchantment books to fix it. So I decided to trade with villagers for enchantment books. But after going down to the village, I found that there were no villagers left no matter how wide and far and long I looked. That's when I remembered that they were all killed by zombies while I was making the creeper farm. This is too epic. Well anyways. It's been one month already. And I am now kind of stranded on this island with the sky base and the beacon. Will I be continuing this series? No. Will I be thanked for watching this video? Yes. Will you shout out the channel members again? Yes. Shout out to the sponsors of this channel. And goodbye.